and welcome back to season two of Zero Wasted Days. I am honored that you are here with me and I am so excited for all of the episodes to come. I am also just very grateful for all of the reviews that you've been leaving and all of the love that you've been giving me inside my DMs. I love nothing more than to be of service to you and to hear that everything that I'm talking about here at Zero Wasted Days is resonating. You know, I really want to inspire you to push the boundaries of what's expected in your life and business, to challenge norms and your growth edges, and to go after the most audacious dreams, because I've seen for myself that anything is truly possible when you have a vision and are ready to go after it. Are you ready to dive in? Let's go. Before we jump into this week's episode, I just want to give you a little heads up about my two-day live event called Attraction that is happening on September 25th and 26th. Now, Attraction is all about helping you elevate and expand your thought leadership, stop making content so hard for yourself, and help you increase your sales, find more opportunities, and attract beautiful people into your business with your content and your thought leadership. You can join me. It is absolutely free. It is across two days. There's going to be a few different trainings. All you need to do is find the link in my show notes or wherever you're watching or listening to this, and I look forward to seeing you there live. Hello, my friend. You are back for another episode of Zero Wasted Days, and I am delighted, honored to have you here listening along, and you have me again this week. I have some beautiful guests lined up, but a lot of times these guests take like months to organize, but I also wanted to come on here just solo for a few weeks because there's a lot that I want to share. I am inviting women into Phoenix Rising, so I want to talk about particular topics and things within my content, and this is obviously one channel of my content that I think is, is best done when I am just sitting here in my chair on my own. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, or the thing that I wanted to talk about today, is around my mission, I guess my why, which I articulate as being helping women redefine how they do business. And I want to explore this a little bit more because it is also central to the Zero Wasted Days way of living and my philosophy and this mission at hand with this podcast. Now, in addition to this whole redefining, and we're going to dive into this a little bit more, I want to be here to inspire you and to help you and maybe educate you and give you everything that you need to help you use that business, use your business to live life first, which is obviously the philosophy and the mission here at Zero Wasted Days. But how do we define our business? How do we make it our own. And there's lots and lots of different ways. And obviously your business is your own, but there is also so much comparison, copying. We seek to be inspired by others, but then at the same time, there's a lot of mimicking of other people's strategies and the way that they're doing things because that's the way that we learn as entrepreneurs. We look at others, we learn, and then naturally we sometimes mimic. And what that takes us away from is really staying in our lane and being in our authenticity and defining who we want to be, how we want to say it, what we want our graphics to look like, all different facets from like your business model right down to your content, to the way that you're selling, everything in between is up to you to define and to continue to redefine. And this is the beauty of our businesses and has been being drilled home to me in my own journey and my own learning time and time again, and more recently than ever, that this is the long game. We're in this for the long game. And the less we focus and stress about what's happening just today and what's happening tomorrow, the more we can keep our eye on the long game. And the fact that continuing to show up consistently in our businesses and show up for ourselves in our lives will step by step take us to where ultimately we want to get to. And I do truly believe that that destiny or that goal, that thing, that place, that being that we are trying to get to is already pre-decided. It's pre 
divinely timed and pre-assigned. And it's up to us as to whether or not we're going to fully grasp everything that comes our way. Elizabeth Gilbert talks about this in her book, Big Magic, that we have opportunities and we have to be in the right frequency and in the right place and time and all of that has to do with frequency to be able to take that opportunity and run with it. And if we don't, then it's going to continue along the little trail of opportunities and it's going to grab somebody else. And I want to talk today about the different ways that I believe we can all really continue to intentionally define how we do business and really why this is so important. We all have to find courage to, and this is at the heart of this podcast, we want to need to find courage to step away from just the traditional ways of being and of doing. I talk a lot about like our patterns and program and conditioning as we grow up from being little girls, what's been modeled for us in society. I am a PK. Do you know what a PK is? It's a preacher's kid. Now, if there was ever any kind of mold that you should be as a PK, then being a child of a preacher was pretty defined, presumably. Except thank God <laughs> and thank my dad and thank my parents for actually not modeling that and modeling what it felt like and what it looked like to go against the grain. Even like little stories of my dad when he was younger as a young boy, he, he told this story about how in, in Holland, he was like throwing rocks with his friend at some light lamp posts and like breaking the glass. And he got taken into the police station. And just that memory for me of, oh, he was a bit of a badass. He was a bit of a, he pushed the boundaries. He was not always set to be a uniting church minister. He was an individual. He was an individual in a family who like packed their bags like we did and jumped on a boat in 1951 to find a better life and went to Canada. And so again, like my grandparents modeled for me going against the grain. And so the more I reflect on my past and there's story after story that even though I had this preacher's kid model set in front of me that I could have just continued to step along those conservative paths and it wasn't overly conservative but conservative enough what I chose to do thankfully was to continue like flexing that courage muscle and to continue to flex stepping away from the norm and that's what this is all about we need to continue to step away and as we step away from like those norms, I really truly believe we step closer to who we truly are. And one of the things that we get the opportunity to do in our businesses is to step fully into our gifts and into, and I talked about it in, our, in my last podcast about going all in. How do we actually really fully step into our calling. And that is really, I think that the answer of that is, is within you. And it's everything down to the questions that you might ask yourself or that I ask my clients inside my programs. How do you want to operate? How do you want to be? How do you want to feel in your days? And when you start from that place, as opposed to what do you want to do and what are your programs going to be called or how are you going to price them and how much you're going to make? You start from this place of like of being heart centered and in your values and in your mission and back to your purpose and your why. And maybe overlaid on that is who you want to serve. So I really believe that when we are you know ready to step fully into our gifts, asking ourselves that question of like, how do you want to operate? How do you want to be? How do you want to feel in your days is going to then influence and impact and enhance and amplify your content, your programs, your everything, your model, your business model, how you sell. And this is also why so many of my calls and programs and what I share with the world starts with that step. Even when we're doing like planning monthly or planning for the quarter with my clients, I come back to 
our values and our mission and our why and our clients, like with that base, because we shift and we change and we pivot and we are cyclical beings that are always in different seasons. And if we're planning out and doing our strategy for quarter four coming up or into 2024, coming back and asking yourself that question, what does this season look like for me? How do I want to feel? And how do I want to be in this season? And if you've just come out of a nine month pedal to the metal trajectory, then maybe it's a season of rest that you need. But maybe if also you've been in a mode of transition and re-flourishing and blossoming and regrouping in your business, then maybe even though we're in the Northern Hemisphere and we're going into winter, maybe it's time to, to really ramp things up. And that is up to you. Like your seasons can mimic nature's seasons, but they can also complement. And there can be times where in your business, you're hustling. And I talk about not hustling, but there's times where you have to really get your acting gear and be putting faster steps forward in a launch time or in a time just when you really feel that fire in your belly. And then there's going to be times when you just want to flow. And I love Nicole Melina, Melina, Meline. She was on Amber Liliestrom's podcast only, I just listened to it in the last couple of days. She talked about this dance between the hustle and the flow and the hustle being the much more masculine. And there's going to be days when you do this. There's going to be days when you have to just hustle more when you're in your systems and you're building web pages and you're talking to your team. And there's all sorts of different things that you're doing in more of your masculine energy. And then there's going to be times and days and hours when you're going to be just more in flow and allowing yourself to go with the cycles and resting and going with the seasons. Even as women in our 28 day ish kind of cycle, we ebb and we flow. And I actually did a reel this morning talking about how I'm an intuitive dresser. <laughs> now this might sound strange to some, but I go into my closet and I'm like, how am I feeling right now? Am I feeling a bit like meh? Or am I feeling like I've got a bit of fire in my belly? And I subconsciously do this. I'm like, and then also I think about how I want to feel. And I quickly decide, okay, this is how I'm feeling. This is how I want to feel. Here's the clothing that I actually want to choose to help me feel more of whatever it is that I'm looking to try to feel. Or if I'm just in a like in that kind of meh mode and maybe I'm in, I'm, it's my period and I just feel like I'm in rest mode, then I model with my clothes that I just want to continue to feel that. Today, I got dressed and actually I was wearing something different earlier, but I got dressed initially and the things that I was gravitating towards were much more kind of feminine, much more like tighter, closer to my hips, as opposed to like flowy skirts that I sometimes wear, big jumper, big sweatshirt over top. And I always surprise myself. I'm like, oh, of course I'm grabbing these things. And as I was grabbing these things and, and, and thinking about how I wanted to feel, and look, this takes me seconds. I don't spend that much time doing this. I don't sit in my closet for half an hour. We don't have time to do that. But it made me, it made me wonder. I wonder where I'm at in my cycle. I looked at my app and I use an app called Stardust. And it told me I'm ovulating. And so it's no wonder that when I am in my ovulation phase and my estrogen and progesterone are both quite high, I am in a highly creative mode as well. So I'm creative. I want to feel, I'm feeling a certain way. So I continue to, so I dress accordingly. And I just think that it's so fascinating. And I love to see how we can really honor and harness how we're feeling in our mind, our bodies, physical bodies, just that energy that you're feeling, but then also like how you want to feel, how you want to embody, what you want to embody, the energy that you want to embody. And this is what I talk about when I do goal embodiment with clients, like what's the energy that you want to embody over this like next period, this next three months, this next quarter. This is all on a granular level as I'm getting changed in the day, but it can also be extrapolated out into everything that you're doing. When I use my soulful schedule, which is my scheduling uh, and planning system, I look at that on a weekly basis. How do I want to feel? How do I want to be? How am I going to show up? I, I'm heavy into my like sales connecting engaging mode. This, these are the feelings that I want to feel. So how am I going to, what's going to help me feel more of this? Now I'm going off on a bit of a tangent, but what is going to help me feel more of this? This is the dance between the hustle and the flow.
So it's really important to remember that in our businesses, we are not always in a growth season. We're not always in the hustle season. And when we think about a lot of us follow lunar cycles, there is light and there is dark. There is also light and dark in our businesses, in our lives. And honoring in those dark times, the fullness of the depths of your, of that darkness is actually, I think, where a lot of that true authenticity comes out of you and comes into your programs, into your content, into everything that you're doing. When you're not always trying to just always be light and airy and energetic. Growth is not also always moving upward. It, it is cyclical. It is in those seasons. It is in those periods of dark that you are growing. And that, when you think about it, will give you permission and help you at times when you feel stuck or feeling frustrated. I think a beautiful question to ask yourself is, what am I learning? Who am I becoming through this? And honoring, but also just really reveling in the fact that you are deepening who you are. You are deepening your growth. You are deepening the person that you are becoming in these dark times. And it was last, last year, actually September, 2022, when I hit a period in my business and Kate Northrop calls it your fertile void. I actually invested $36,000, not all at once, not up front, but I invested in a program that was going to cost me $36,000 with a brand new coach. And I was fired up. It was September, 2022. And it was literally days after that I felt, and I didn't do the invest up level, I thought it was gonna be the catalyst because so many times that has happened to me and I invest in something and I get that, that catalyst, that injection, that activation of that investment. This is not what happened to me this time. And actually I had, the, I had a client the other day who was joining me in Phoenix Rising. I think she texted and said, oh my gosh, like since I invested, she invested like back in August, She's like, it's been such an activation. That's normally what I hear. It's an instant up level. In my case, it wasn't. And I felt like I just hit this fertile void and I hit a wall and I realized that I had to look really deeply at myself and at my business. And this kind of fertile void was not gonna be you know, solved by my coach. It wasn't, had nothing to do with her. It was just part of the cycle that I was in and probably why I was seeking out a coach and seeking out some sort of support because maybe this was, this was all, I knew this was already on its way and I really felt like I needed some support through this. I believe that it's, that was divinely timed because now actually looking back, I'm like without her and without that mastermind, I don't know how I would have actually got through it. It was actually so supportive. And so at that time I did a lot of really deep reflection to see what fell off. And at the end of the day, I realized that the thing that felt off for me was that I kept, I was achieving financial successes and hitting some big milestones in my business financially, but I kept attracting clients who were looking for someone to fix them. Now, I love all of my clients dearly and it's not, oh, so-and-so there, so and so there. There was just this like, this, overall feeling that I got that, and it was probably, and not just probably, it was definitely an energy I was putting out, a fixing energy that was then attracting me people that wanted fixing. And I kept attracting these kind of clients who were just really looking for someone to solve their problems as opposed to doing the work themselves. And even though I was doing my own inner work, I was forgetting that my clients had to do the same. And I wasn't really at a point in my business where I was ready to integrate it yet and to teach it. And so I had to really pull back all of my layers, all the layers of myself and my business. And I stopped taking any one-on-one -on -one clients. So this was September. I didn't take another client until January. I had to have really deep trust and belief that it was going to Come, that this was okay, that I was investing a huge amount of money every month in a new coach. And all of a sudden my revenues, I had some monthly recurring revenues that my revenues were dwindling. 
And I had to go back to the drawing board to fully understand the depths of my calling and my mission, this mission that I'm here with you working on and working towards. And it was out of that, so that was January, that I realized that I'd had this dream of creating this podcast and creating this movement called Zero Wasted Days. But I was still playing in the dance of fear, dance with fear, that Zero Wasted Days didn't fit my business coaching. And how was I going to integrate it? And how was I going to birth what at the time felt like disjointed things? And the more that I dove into my own self and got really, you know, clear with my calling, I realized that there was such a beautiful intersection between helping women redefine how they do business and letting their businesses be the thing that live life first. That is the essence of Zero Wasted Days. It was like I was saying the, the mission and the purpose of Zero Wasted Days all along. But I still felt until that time that there was this kind of disjointedness. And it was in March of this year, 2023, that Zero Wasted Days was born. And so you can see from the depths of my despair and the depths of my dark times of like up to almost six months, that from that I birthed one of my biggest missions. And at the end of the day, our biggest dreams really do expand us. And when I think back, and this is a really good question to ask, you need to think about those dark times or those lulls or those fertile voids as being your biggest teachers. And ask yourself that question, how is this part of my becoming? How is this going to be, not even just reflected, but how is this going to help me be who I want to be. So I know as a female entrepreneur, there is so much talk of working in flow and ease and leaning into your feminine energy. But I also know that so many female entrepreneurs are feeling frustrated and stuck or not hitting the financial goals for themselves because they don't actually have a strategy. Now, a strategy doesn't need to be difficult, but I have something that's gonna make it even easier for you to create a strategic plan for your business. I have the Annual Almanac, which is a 16-page, absolutely free document for you that's going to help you map out your business for the next quarter, maybe for the next year, and it's going to give you a clear map on what you need to do to get to where you want to get to and make those financial goals a reality. You can download the Annual Almanac via the link in my bio, at the show notes, wherever you're watching this video or listening to the podcast. So as you're trying to define how you do business, leaning into these cycles and these seasons and seeing that every stage is so valuable to you, you can really never lose when you're always growing. And so you can let yourself off the hook for feeling guilty or bad or beating yourself up for being in a, in a time of reflection or a dark time. And no, this is actually going to be one of the most magnificent times because you are actually doing your biggest growth. And so as you are growing your businesses and pivoting and tweaking and continuing to evolve your business to define it completely in your own way, I want you to think about what feels like a success for you. And is success just a, a numbers game for you or is it... Something like having more joy and having more freedom and having more ease. I have a client who for the first time in, I think she said four years, is taking a holiday this week. And this is after having worked together for the last few months. And she says, Suzanne, this is, I'm doing this because you have taught me and because of you. So yes, there are financial metrics that we need to and want to measure ourselves on. But when you are defining what it means to have a successful business and defining how you want to do business. Think about also the joy metrics, the freedom metrics, the ease metrics that you are getting more and more of every single day. And this is the way that I want to do business and to take those who also want their version of doing business for themselves along with me. And so I want you to think about 
what version do you want? And the primary question, like I said earlier, is deciding how you want to feel first, how you want to be, and then think about, and this is why the life first embodiment is so important. Thinking about all of your ways that you are feeling joy, feeling ease, feeling freedom, and ask yourself the question, whether or not you are actually embodying those things right now, or are you waiting for one day that to do those things? After you decide what you want for yourself, ask yourself that question. How can I embody this today? Because the minute that you start to embody that today in your life is the minute that it starts to augment your frequency and your vibration and then when you plug into your strategy and your business model and your offers and your clients and your price and your mission and your purpose and everything that goes into your business strategy, it is emanating this frequency of joy, of ease, of freedom, of high vibration. And the, that is exactly what's going to attract people into your world. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the price of your program. It's not going to be whether or not there's two calls or three calls. It is, and I say that unfortunately because a lot of people like to lean on that. They're like, but it has all of these things and all of these features. And But what are the benefits? Your energy is everything. And so personally, I am making active shifts in my business to continue to embody how I want my business to look and how that defines how I feel. And so much so that I have actually made some recent changes, even in my program, like mid launch, I realized how much I was not dragging my energy down, but how much my Phoenix Rising Mastermind was making me feeling like a forced energy. And I actually decided, and I had been thinking about this for a long time, and I don't know why I didn't decide it before, but I actually decided to move my Phoenix Rising Mastermind into an evergreen program so that it is ongoing. I want women to be able to join with that energy of not being forced, of not having to act on fast action bonuses or the fact that it's one price today and then it's going to be another price next week or just the pain points. I want you to feel fueled. I want you to feel ready and, and not forced into anything and that it is the divine timing for you to join the program because it is the right time. And I have shifted things so that it is an evergreen program that women can join any time that they want. I want to be able to, in my content, and as I was talking about earlier, about this being the long game. I want to sow the seeds. I talk about sowing the seeds and I love this analogy with nature and of course plants and gardening. I want to sow those seeds and let them germinate when they're ready and actually forcing them to blossom and forcing them to, to bloom is not going to be good for the ultimate flower at the end of the day. And personally, forcing for me doesn't, fe doesn't feel good either. We have to, and a lot of times... The challenge here is that we struggle to be able to accept the power of divine timing. I know and I trust that the women in the group, in our cohort that is going to start in October, will be exactly who is needed at that time. So whether that be three, six, nine, twelve, twenty women, if it's small, it's beautiful and intimate. And the members and myself will get and give what we need to give and get together in that smaller intimate group. As numbers increase and as women come and go from the group, it is going to be, it's divinely timed. It is going to be an energetic space for more. And so allowing and giving yourself permission to not let, in this instance, ego get in the way, then it allows me to continue to share my gifts without having that fear that there's not gonna be enough women in the room. Because nothing is by accident. Amber Lilliestrom said it's, it's a cosmic matrix of interconnectedness, and I love that. It is this matrix, 
and nothing is going to happen by accident. The women that need to be there are going to be there. So if you've ever launched a program and nobody shows up or one or two people, then that is how it was meant to be. And maybe this is your version one of this program. And there is going to be a version two and a version three. And as Anne Lamott says, it's your shitty first draft. How else can we learn anything unless we try and unless we just carry on despite what we think it should look like, this expectation? There is no blueprint to follow. We need to fumble. We need to fail. And the gift to our clients to actually co-create in this space is enormous. And I really love this idea when I think about people that come into my world, as I have created a, a new blank slate over the last year, I am welcoming in and inviting in completely new women into my world. And I can't tell you, the women that are falling into my world now are not needy, don't look to me to fix them. Sure, they look to me to mentor them and to guide them and to show them what's possible, but it is a very different energy. And I've had to accept that and learn and remind myself that starting again effectively is going to also take time to snowball. And I am planting those seeds from this new place of renewed calling and renewed mission. So it is going to take time. And I am inviting women to come in over the threshold on their own and not forcing them. And as I've been putting out more and more seeds and my next season is all about planting even more seeds, I love the analogy of thinking that you think about, I plant all of these seeds into my garden. I, I know where I put them. I put them, I line them all up. But as those flowers blossom and they go back to seed, so this, the after a flower blossoms, it, it dries out and it goes back to seed and you get lots and lots of seeds, seeds in that seed head. If you leave that seed head, some flowers will re-germinate and it scatters everywhere. And that's effectively what this world of sending out a new mission, talking about this in my content, getting onto new podcasts, putting this on YouTube, writing a blog is doing. It's scattering seeds and I'll never know where those are going. And this is the beauty of our businesses and of this obviously this digital world. You never know when someone is going to discover your work in two years time. They will divinely find what they need to find, which is hopefully you, if they need to hear what you're teaching. Everything that we share lives on into, in this digital world. And those seeds will get picked up by the wind and be planted in completely new places. I want you to think about, as you step into this next quarter, how you are showing up in your business in terms of how you want to feel and be as a first port of call. And if you want to define your own success, you want to define how you show up, you want to define how you feel at the end of the day, then you have to intentionally and consciously think about how you want to feel. So if you want to feel excited and motivated and inspiring, then you need to intentionally embody those feelings. So what are you going to do today to feel excited and motivated and inspiring? Not just inspired. You could be inspired. Maybe that's what you want to be. But if you want to inspire others, then think about what you're doing, what actions you're taking to make you feel like that. And that is going to set the tone because you're going to embody how you want to feel on a daily basis, on a weekly basis in this next quarter. And that is going to influence, like I said, your programs and your content and your offers and your business model, everything. And it's going to, most importantly, attract people and women into your world that are going to resonate with that. And they're going to resonate with that energy. And 
It takes time. It's not going to happen like that. <laughs> it takes time, but you need to plant those seeds. So go away, ask yourself that question. How do you want to be? How do you want to feel? And then what are you going to do to continue to embody that feeling? And how are you going to let that influence what you're going to then do in the next quarter and maybe in the next year? So I hope that itself planted some seeds for you today to help you really see how you can redefine how you do business and to give you the courage to step away from always doing the traditional things and the traditional ways of being and to fully and authentically step into your gifts. I'll see you guys again the next time. Thanks for joining me for this week's episode of Zero Wasted Days. I truly hope that you found it to be valuable and inspirational as you create and you grow your own business and work towards living more life first. I would love you to subscribe, to like this video, and of course, if you have any comments, drop them in here below. Also, if you tag me on socials, I would love to get to know you. I love connecting with my audience, so be sure to tag me at Suzanne Acteson or at Zero Wasted Days underscore, and I will see you inside the DMs as well as here for the next episode next week.